Why wasn't Titus compelled to be circumcised? This is also an excellent question. Uh, seems like he set a bad example via Paul by not doing it if we are supposed to do it. And then uh, she, she, of course, is referencing Galatians 2, 3, and 4, which I put in your show notes <clears throat> for those who would like to check it out. Uh, but I'll read it for you right now, too. Uh, but not even, this is NASB, by the way, but not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. But it was because of the false brethren secretly brought in who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Messiah Yeshua, in order to bring us into bondage. Uh, I have very specific ideas about what I think this is uh, and what's going on here. Uh, I'll, I'll give my thoughts, and then uh, if you want to jump on the back of that, Rob, uh, that would be great. Um, oh, hey, go ahead. I, I think that uh, I think that we've talked before on this show about the word circumcised. Now, the the, um, the new perspective on Paul, which we could talk about briefly, uh, kind of touches on this. I believe that, uh, and the new perspective on Paul was that, uh, uh, for those who might not know, and, and there's many different facets of the new perspective on Paul. E.P. Sanders, uh, N.T. Wright are some of the uh, scholars, uh, Jimmy Dunn, are some of the scholars who have kind of championed the idea of, of uh, uh, the new perspective on Paul. What the new perspective on Paul is, uh, very quickly, and uh, just maybe some of the main tenets of the new perspective on Paul, is that uh, Paul was not fighting against salvation by works as his main thrust in things like Romans and whatnot. Uh, because the Jews of the first century didn't necessarily believe that work saved you. Rather, uh, what the new perspective on Paul would say is that Paul was speaking against salvation by bloodline. Uh, that is, if you were born uh, as a physical descendant of Jacob, you were quote unquote in. And if you did not, uh, and then there were things that you could do to, to uh, fall out of grace, obviously, with God. Uh, but you were, you were born into salvation or whatever you'd want to say uh, through, through bloodline. And then um, the Gentiles were not born into that. And if you were a Gentile who wanted to become Jewish, if, if these are, I mean, I'm using very broad strokes here, but if you wanted to become part of, of Israel, you had to go through a con some form of a, a conversion process or ritual. And every group within the, uh, within the first century, as we can tell, might have had either different forms of, of what this might have looked like. It probably wasn't all the same. And each group probably, just like today, didn't necessarily accept another group's, uh, you know, like for instance, the Qumran, the Qumran sect wouldn't accept the, the Sadducees' form of conversion into, uh, into their sect of Judaism. Instead, the Qumranis had their own process of, of converting, which was a two-year-long process, right? And so anyway, all this to say that uh, when, when we see the word circumcision in, uh, in the apostolic writings or in the New Testament, there are various meanings, just like the word ger in the Torah. And so uh, circumcision, the way that I see circumcision and the various meanings in the apostolic scriptures, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Rob, but uh, I see uh, one form to be the uh, the physical uh, uh, act of uh, cutting away the foreskin. Uh, I see another one, uh, another use of the word circumcision, uh, as being the ritual conversion to a sect of Judaism within the first century. Um, and uh, I can give an example of this. Uh, circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. But what matters is keeping the commandments of the Lord or keeping the Torah. Uh, this is, uh, obviously, circumcision is a commandment of the Lord, so what's he talking about? Well, it seems as though he might be talking about a conversion process. So what I see here in Galatians 2, 3 through 4, is that uh, mm -hmm. Titus was not compelled to go through a ritual of conversion to be accepted by the Jews. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that he wasn't circumcised. I, I see it as though, uh, but Timothy, however, was, right? Uh, Paul, it seems as though Paul had him circumcised so that, uh, Timothy would be accepted within the, within the, uh, synagogue, which I take to mean that he went through the actual ritual that was prescribed by a specific sect. What do you think, Rob? Uh, I look at it maybe a little differently. Okay. Um, with Acts 16, I was talking about Timothy. It just says plainly that, that, uh, Paul circumcised Timothy and uses the aorist voice of uh, a tense form in Greek. It's just, I think it's just Paul's the subject. 
we have the verb and Timothy's the object. Okay. Um, and it's the same, the same kind of construction that uh, is used earlier um, in Acts it, that when P or when Luke is describing um, in chapter seven, what, Stephen's speech before the Sanhedrin, he says, you know, Abraham circumcised Isaac and Isaac, his 12 sons. So the idea is that the, you have the ma- uh, the father uh, circumcising the son, the, the sons in, in Luke. And perhaps or in, so, in acts so, in, in acts. And, and so, wait, can, um, wait, so, so then are you, are you suggesting then, um, and maybe you're about to answer this. Are you suggesting then that maybe it was as if Paul was the teacher of Timothy and therefore it was laid upon him to circumcise him as a Gentile yeah, I coming think, into I the think covenant? What, yeah, and we have to remember this is before uh, Jewishness at this time was not ideologically defined as having a Jewish mother. That yes. had, that wasn't, uh, and so... In fact, it, from uh, what we be, can tell, it, it goes through father's line, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, right, yeah. So there is a way where where Paul is kind of becoming Timothy's spiritual father at this point. And now we know that in his epistles to Timothy, he says, you know the scriptures from youth, right? And even his, I think it says his grandmother even, uh, he, he knew, but he didn't have that father figure um, uh, apparently, we just don't know, you know, then so Paul came and, um, but, uh, but get back to Galatians, what we're told is that Titus was not compelled mm. to be circumcised. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to look at how Paul uses also in Galatians, this compelled, the idea is it's an external, uh, intimidation kind of, uh, uh, imposition on a person that unless you do this you are not socially acceptable here and then because out of the threat of being excluded um <laughs> i'm talking to, this happens all the time i'm talking to someone and then they get up and leave <laughs> apparently hopefully everything's okay but uh obviously caleb had to step out there for a second <laughs> i'm here i'm here i'm here um, in, in any event, um, that what what I take away from Galatians two is that is that Paul is is saying, that, look, we're letting the terms of the new covenant bear fruit here, which is the God's writing the, His law on the hearts of of His people, and they respond with a desire to obey. A desire, the cry of the heart is Abba, Father, right? The desire to hear His word and to do his word, mm-hmm. not just to be a hearer only, and to hear it in all its fullness. And of course, Paul's big argument is the fullness of the Torah, and this is true in Galatians and in Romans, um, no matter what different Jewish sectarian groups are promoting in the late Second Temple period, unless they have Yeshua, they are they have a, a, a representation of Torah that falls short that falls short of the, the fullness of, of what it is uh, in reality. And so Messiah, uh, Yeshua, is the, centric, is the central uh, uh, focus mm-hmm. uh, that, that properly uh, frames our understanding of, of what the covenant with Abraham is all about, what creation is all about, the, uh, the sin creeping into the creation, the call of Abraham, uh, and then, of course, the, the, the Torah given at Mount Sinai. Paul's given us this chronology, and under, trying to use the Torah itself as the template for understanding what is justification. Okay, Abraham, he, ha, he says he believed, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was still, as yet, physically uncircumcised, mm, mm-hmm. but he was recognized as righteous. So Paul is saying the precedent in the Torah itself is that there's a place where a person is righteous and has nothing to do with their uh, foreskin. Now, uh, but Paul does, and he doesn't do this in Romans, but he does it in, or he doesn't do it in Galatians, but he does it in Romans. He clarifies what circumcision means. Um, Because if you were to read uh, other uh, Second Temple Jewish thought, 
mm-hmm. on circumcision, for example, and you could find this online, read Philo of Alexandria in the special laws. He, and he's before Paul, right? He's writing in Greek. He, he uh, interprets circumcision as this philosophical kind of uh, thing, and, he, and it's that other nations do it. it. He's not anchoring it in covenant with Abraham. He, it's become this philosophical kind of meaning of, of putting away of, of uh, intellectual ignorance and seeking true wisdom. It's in this fluffy knowledge like that. And on the, at the, on the other hand, we have during the Maccabean era, mass for, forced circumcision. And again, mm-hmm. when, when, when Josephus describes it, he uses the same word, compelled, force is what some of the early Maccabean uh, kings did when they expanded their territory. So they wanted to go into uh, what we call Idumea or Edom. They expanded their nation, nation's borders. They uh, expand in there with military power, and they force circumcise all the males and say, you are now Judeans. They did that in a few different places. So by the time we get to the first century, the idea of circumcision is very complex. It has multiple meanings depending on which place in society you would go. And what Paul wants to do is, is to say, look, we, we have to understand circumcision from the perspective of the Torah and its relationship with righteousness, uh, 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 where righteousness comes from, finding righteousness in God's eyes, and that is, righteousness which is of God, dikaiosune tu theu, as he writes, the righteousness which is from God, um, and how this all fits together. And so Paul is trying to hold a space for the gospel to go out and do its work rather than have these competing sects that are out there trying to force people, saying, look, unless you do it our way, you're never going to be one of us. Because that's where the fear of man comes in. Oh, if I— if I'm if I if someone threatens me, you know, you're never we're never going to let you in unless you do X, Y, and Z. Then uh, the fear of man is going to say, "Oh, well, okay, I'll do it. I just want to be acceptable to you guys." And and, he, and Paul's trying to say, "Look, you can't respond that way in the world." I think that you and I are essentially saying the same thing on that. Then, I mean, granted, your take on on uh, on Timothy being circumcised. Yes, I, I agree. Your, your, your reading is probably more uh, uh, honest to simply what the text says. In other words, if we're just looking at what the text says, your reading of that is probably uh, a lot more honest. But I think when we, when we uh, look at uh, uh, Titus being circumcised, I think that you and I are essentially saying the same thing. Right? Yeah, or, am I, yeah. or am I missing it? There's actually early—in the early Church Fathers, there's a tradition that Titus was, in fact, physically circumcised. Yeah, well, that doesn't— yeah. And if that's the case, then, then when we read Timothy, 1st, 2nd Timothy, we read Titus, we realize that Paul's writing to, you know, a person who is, you know, reckoned physically in Paul's eyes as being part of the Abrahamic covenant and also having that mark in their flesh. Um, yeah. But Paul is not Paul. And we know this from Acts 15. There was no <laughs> there, there was never a mandate to go out and enforce circumcision among disciples of Yeshua, because that enforcement, this led, it is necessary, this is what the Pharisee said in Acts 15.5, it is necessary for us to circum, to be circumcising them. So now all of a sudden you're creating a, uh, an agency in the body Messiah to go around, and this is our task. Well, we are here to, you know, and, and it says the Holy Spirit did not agree with that, that interpretation. <laughs>